Ian's first pick. No, oh, very interesting how they prioritize the Gragas. Uh, um, that's obviously going to go into the flex pick role. Uh, I'm assuming Ishiru Gaming is going to pick up the Maokai at the return. So we just have to see. Yeah, and that's another champion we've been seeing quite a bit of. Uh, Maokai feels like he never leaves the metagame, but I'm curious as to why he's maybe back. Because it's just, again, a top laner that seems to really slot into that big tanky role. Yeah, and he got a recent buff recently. Mm -hmm. Well, makes sense, Sarah. So we are going to have Graves and Azir champion. We didn't touch on just yet, but he's been a super popular mid lane champion. We are going to get the jungle Graves, though. I'm sure you're happy about that. But Azir, perfectly strong mid lane. We see a lot of teams pick him nice and early. That's very interesting. Like, picking up the Azir this early into the game, uh, when Varus is up, uh, that's just saying. I'm just gonna, if I get this idea, I can take this game. Yep, just asking for a counter pick perhaps, but certainly a champion that can get a lot of work done. Braum though, he's locked in on the line gaming side, so they'll have their support set in. Who let Braum is the, where available you just take him, it's always a comfortable pick in a draft. Uh, yeah indeed, uh, so it's actually going to be a Gragas uh, jungle and yep. Maokai top, so that's pretty much uh, locked in, having uh, three thank you uh, members. And we see this so often in a draft, right? You just Pick your front line nice and early. These are very safe landers and or junglers, and of course, Brom's a safe support. Uh, I guess how you complement the rest of the carries is interesting, but just everybody wants to take your front line because you got to try and, you know, Rice is obviously banned, or people like Izzy, you have to shake off a lot of early damage. I really like this draft from Lion Gaming. They really hasn't shown anything. Like, they could transition into Poke, they could transition into Hard Engage. Like, they just haven't changed anything. Yep, well. We'll have to see what they want to round out their picks with, but Asuras do have to make a few picks of their own, given that they have some uh, some ch uh, some things to try and sort out here. Lucian is being hovered right now, but not locking it in just yet. So 10 seconds will give them a chance to figure out these last few picks. Oh, they Oops, should not going to show too much, though. Lucian Nautilus. All right, so they didn't take the Trundle when the enemy team took the Maokai. That's very interesting. Hmm. And it might, be, it might be obvious to you, but for the viewers at home, what exactly are we looking for with that interaction? Because Trundle's likely the support there, as far as that goes, but against the Maokai, you just get so much additional benefit. Yeah, so they're ho hovering over the Varus, very good, against Azir. And the Twitch, hmm. we did see some Twitch in LCK, but <laughs> not quite successfully. Like, people are still experimenting it, but it's just not at the point that uh, you want to show. Well, you never know, maybe trying to make a statement here in the first game, but still some time these teams to finish off these picks here. Varus, so like you mentioned already, is a pretty safe standard pick into the Azir. We'll look at that matchup in just a second, but I have to think the Varus is locked in. Oh, Sayer's going to mix it up though. Varus is locked in. Jin not quite locked in just yet, but there he is. Jin is actually going to pick it. So you said it, they can transition into anything. What have we transitioned into? Uh, so it's a uh, poke comp, yep. but it looks... Like actually, that Nautilus could actually go to the top lane and they could still pick the Trundle. Mm -hmm. Because the Trundle just offers so much utility against Nom and mobility uh, ADCs. So, <laughs> oh, he, your favorite support. Yep. Uh, definitely one that I've uh, not performed too well on. Thanks for reminding <laughs> me. <laughs> Early in Soul, probably not going to be the pick there, but uh, looks like we'll have to have a, a little wait to find out that last pick. Yeah. Just too curious what kind of last puzzle piece uh, Isuru Gaming is going to choose. Well, it could be a support. I mean, probably not Early in Soul, unfortunately, but uh, you said, did say already, Trundle just seems a pick that's very good until a lot of the tanky champions that were shown on the other side. Yeah, and by having that Nautilus top, they guarantee a uh, on-click uh, CC, so that's going to be good. And having the Trundle just, uh, just uh, makes the team comp uh, well fortified. Well, we are back in, and look at you! Oh. The Prophet Soul Strikes! <laughs> Trundle was the last pick there, so it's going to be Trundle support, Nautilus top. Uh, we kind of talked a bit about what's on the line gaming side, but I'm curious, what have we seen now from ISG? So ISG has a very standard comp. Uh, they need to watch out for the poke potential from the line gaming. So they need to come from uh, three, di uh, two different directions, and the main focus would be the top laner, Pride. Uh, he needs to get these flank wards, uh, flank TPs in. Mm -hmm. And again, like you're trying to break up uh, kind of battle lines that are drawn, I suppose. Very curious to see how the first game goes out, but we're sort of wondering about the drafts. We maybe were hoping for some fun picks, but we are going to get things nice and standard. I have to imagine, Sol, you're very happy with the current standard of draft we see for the first game. Yeah, very, uh, very standard uh, picks from uh, both of these teams. Uh, just it comes down to execution. Yep, well, we'll have to see how that all works out because we are going to have, you know, a little bit little bit of time, but we should get into game very shortly for these two teams and see how they navigate some pretty strong drafts here. I'm curious, so just as far as the early game goes, Salt, what are we maybe thinking about as far as uh, 
what these teams are looking for? Because you kind of mentioned like 5v5 what the team comps do, but you have to kind of get to that mid or late game phase. What are these team comps looking to do and what points can we look at in the game and say, okay, we're strong now, this is where we're going to fight you? So I'm not actually sure uh, if they want a lane swap because both Jin and Lucian are very strong laners and Nautilus and Maokai is just a farm fiesta. <laughs> just a farm fiesta? Well, yeah. probably not too much fun there, but we'll have to see. Uh, curious about your thoughts on the jungle matchup though, because of course that was uh, where you used to be as a professional player. Always want your insights on everything, but particularly in the jungle matchup. Uh, pretty safe stuff. You mentioned Graves is already the best jungle, but it is going to be Gragas for more of that utility. Nidalee not going to be seen. Kindred not going to be seen. But you said it already. You think Graves is probably the best jungle pick in this patch. So, like I said, Graves, as long as he goes even, even he's just going to outperform this you know, Gragas and it's going to put a lot of pressure on this Gregus because he's like the main uh, initiator in this team and that's going to put a lot of uh, yeah, pressure on, onto him. Well, let's find out, I guess, because we are on to Summoner's Rift for the first game of the International Wildcard Invitational. Lion Gaming versus Isurus Gaming as the teams are going to move out, but looks like just some pretty standard stuff. As no one wants to get too close just yet. Everyone going to fan out across the river because we'll take a nice wide tour down. You can see everyone just sitting... Pretty much setting up the early vision, but you said it already. Lane Salt looks like it's not going to happen based on current standings. Mm. So it's going to be... Oh, actually. Well, everyone just kind of fanning out for a second, but like you said, looks like probably no lane swap at least initially there based on those positions. Everyone just sort of standing very uh, neutrally around the side and just making sure that, you know, if they have their vision set up, making sure to spot anyone looking for an invade. We've seen this pretty much since the dawn of League of Legends, it almost feels like. Everyone's just drawing standard battle lines as we are going to pop ourselves back in. So, actually, the Isuru Gaming's the one who's going to do the lane swap. Well, looks like they are going to move it because Zekro and Newbie are there towards the top side of the map. Jirol is actually there as well and he's not with his jungler right now, so maybe going to lose a little bit of early experience. But uh, Alliance Swap is actually coming through, so I'm curious, uh, who do you think is going to win the 2v1 matchups? Because they are going to dodge the 2v2, and it looks like it takes some of the Sentinels down as well. Make sure they get a little bit of early gold for themselves, but so not going to do the blue buff, of course. So as we can see, the position of, of Maokai, I think he's just uh, expecting, not expecting a lane Swap, mm -hmm. he just leashed for the Gragas and just took some camps. And he's going to get a bit punished for it. Yeah, could be in trouble actually, good bite down there from Newbie, great damage there from Lucian. Well, Malkai gets chunked to about 40% health. You can see Kletos and Pride actually sticking together for the early double jungle. So that neutral start did not help them as far as vision goes. Lots of free damage there. And in fact, Malkai sort of has to stay because his jungle is already on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing, to be honest. Uh, just going, staying at the top side. He's going to get four men dove anytime soon. Well, I'll we'll have to see if they do move in for a dive. But uh, it is always a worry, certainly as a top laner. And... I think that has to just be like a lack of vision, right? Because we saw at the start of the game, everyone was set out neutrally. We'll move ourselves back in the game once again, but curious to see what happens. Because as you can see, the rest of Asurus are actually moving in towards this top side. They'll steal away this blue buff. So if the Gregus and Brom doesn't back right now, Maokai's in big trouble. All right, well, looks like no one's backing right now. They're actually going to keep shoving down that bottom side, but Pride and Kletos will steal this buff away. And we are primed for a potential dive. Geraldo, I think knowing this, He's going to back away. Stayed for a couple more CS, but he's actually going to TP down bottom side now. So curious adaptation, but he's actually going to get out from under the tower dive potentially. So kind of cute to get out of that situation. Yeah, but you have to realize that he burnt his summoner spell for it. So it's a win for Isuru Gaming so far. Yeah, definitely getting the summoner, and they'll keep the standard push there in that top half as well. So looks like three members top for Isurus. Again, making sure that they've got that push going on. And we see this so often, Sol, as far as lane swap is concerned. This is effectively our standard lane swap. What are we expecting to happen from here? Because what should happen is our top tower is going to go down for one team, our bottom out is going to go down for the other. Kind of what happens after that? Because I think a lot of people at home might not be like, hey, if they're just taking towers, what's going on? But why bother lane swapping and what should we see after that? So obviously the poke comp that's coming from the uh, line gaming is going to be so oppressive in the mid game. So that's why I think that's why Isuru Gaming wanted to lane swap and take the towers early. Yep, just make sure you guarantee yourself some gold. You can see Kledos continuing that jungle. Thiak actually... Gonna take the Gromp down for himself. But it looks like Towers are just gonna go down. Pride's gonna try and deny back some of these CS and should be able to get most of them down. See if he's done his homework as far as calculations go. Certainly has. Even gonna get a free auto down in there. Might not kill that last creep, but he's gonna get that bounce back and looks like the wave's in a great place for that initial land swap. Yeah, indeed. And both the uh, bottom duo is gonna go to the opposite lane and take the opposite tower. But that's when the teleport comes in. Like you mm -hmm. either dive or you don't. But 
uh, Lion Gaming doesn't really have any teleport left, mm. so that's going to be quite. Uh, that's going to put a question mark in the head. Well, we'll see exactly where the lanes end up after that first tower has gone down, but it's one apiece on structures so far. Looks like ISG, they're going to move themselves down towards the Maokai lane. Jarrell's actually bottom right now, just trying to get a little bit of CS. But Jin and Braum have actually made their way to the top side as well. So could just see that trade early on. We do some some serious reset, although actually I like this from Newbie. Just a bit of extra pressure coming into that mid lane. But it looks like they'll just take some jungle instead. So Graves getting up, getting ahead nice and early as we are going to have Thiak move into this top lane and start yet another 3v0. So it is the standard lane swap. We're not going to have any elongated standard lanes, unfortunately. Those are my favorite lane swap lanes, so... Yeah, so, Lion Gaming, they're the one hitting the tower first, so they, g they might actually go for two towers. Might to see. Looks of it. Always an option. Kledos down this bottom side, though. Graves is very good in a lane swap, given how much damage he can do onto the structures. So, Zekro and Nubi moving in, but you can see just how quickly they managed to get it. See, so, yeah, though, it looks like he is going to deny back the CS, so no push through this time. That tier 2 in top lane will stay safe for now, and Jin, unfortunately, only has so many bullets he can use into that turret. But you can see Sirius Gaming actually a little late to try and take this out. I think they have to wait a second wave as well. Although Seiya also in a similar problem as looks like Lion Gaming are going to take that Rift Herald down. So lots of objective trading here early on. Yeah, it's really expected. If you take the top tower, you might as well take the Rift Herald while you're backing. And they take the Rift Herald, they're probably going to put a lot of pressure at the bottom. On cool. the other side, they'll probably take the, the dragon and the response. Yep, so pretty standard objective trades here, but right now, ISG just busy clearing out these turrets. So Crowley should be able to get them. Actually denies back all the CS's top lane. Looks like trouble actually here for Pride. Flash Twisted advance in. There's the body slam in onto the Nautilus. He's only level two. He's gonna flash, they but it's straight it. into a slow and a good tag there. Should get the stun down. First blood goes to Maokai. That was excellently played. Uh, there was pretty much a bait like uh, getting the Herald, we're going to back, but there was just a fake. Yep, and managed to get the first blood for themselves. The trade though is going to come out. As Sayer actually is going to spot them there onto the Dragon. A few traps down for a bit of vision, but just trying to poke them down. Looks like he can't stop the Dragon, but it's at oh, least going to get annoying. Oh, that's all good. Dragon health going to start stacking up a bit more, so have to tank it for a little while longer, but Dragon goes down. Kledos does manage to smite that down, so the expected trade there, Rift Herald for Dragon. Yeah, but at the, at the end of the day, uh, a kill went over to Lion Gaming, so that's going to be boost of morale for them. Yep, and you can see a thousand gold up as well, so certainly translating nicely early on into the game. We'll have a check in with Midland, they haven't been here just yet, because uh, they've been busy farming away, we've had all this action in the side lanes. But it looks like Azir versus Varus right now, go pretty well early on, but pretty even in CS, tier up for Uri though early. So he's going to stack that up, and double Dorans plus double Dagger, looking for that early Stinger, possibly into Nash's there for EMP. So looks like Varus and Azir, matchup's going about how we expected. Just lots of farming. Yeah, so from Varus' point of view, this is just fine. Like, he can output more damage than Azir later on in the game. Certainly from a safer range, as Sia is actually pushing down a pretty big wave here. Yeah, and uh, Theax actually here with the Herald buff, so there's just going to be so much pressure. And again, another great little kind of map rotation here from Lion Gaming. LG going to look for damage onto this turret. So we're going to try and clear this out. Good pill there from Nubi with the TP aggressively. Going to try and get one down. The ulti out there from Gragas. But doesn't quite connect him for the rest of it. Zycro though snared up. Huge body slam's going to land in there as well. And that's going to force the flash up from Lucian Arce. Going to try and dive straight back into the lines as well. And he's actually going to take him out. Braum manages to get the 1v1 almost. And now he's going to stun up Nubi by time for the tower. Lion Gaming, really good stuff here. Very nicely played from Lion Gaming. They knew that they killed an Nautilus and he had to force a teleport at top. So very well recognized. And that and that late TP that Malka had to burn early down to the bottom lane actually comes back up and they use it nicely. Blue buff even going to get stolen away and donated over to Yuri. So excellent play here from Lion. But Kletos is going to try and answer here and roam into Lion Gaming's blue buff. But he's actually going to walk over a pink ward. So they'll know he's there if they want to try and contest for it. And there's a lot of pressure coming in. I'm not sure Kletos can stay. In fact, he's just going to clear the ward. That's quite brave. It looks like he'll get out safely. Gerard going to check. Does put a ward down. This is quite dangerous. Certainly looks like it. EMP around the other side as well. They really want to steal this away. They will get the smite down. But EMP takes a bit of poke there from the Varus. As Saiyan moves into the top line, they collect the farm. Gerard going to very kindly donate that over. He's going to start the Grump, actually. But at the end of the day, Varus has blue. Azir doesn't. Yep. So if I, tell, if I told my mid laner that uh, your blow buff is gone, he's going to be very angry. <laughs> well, unfortunately, a nice steal there from LG. Does end up denying that away. We'll see if it does help. Uh, if EMP does suffer. 
in the lane because Varus is going to have a bit of a buff lead there. Kletos, though, back around this side of the jungle. Nothing to clear out just yet. But Lyad have done a really good job actually getting ahead early. 2k up already under 10 minutes in. And it's honestly just been from some really smart map movement. Yeah, and it just being a, the one who's being proactive plays. And I really like proactive play. <laughs> well, you're a jungler, that makes sense. As uh, We'll see what Lion Gaming can do here in the mid lane, perhaps. Definitely looking to try and break this potential siege up, but have a Varus ready to go. Ooh. Here comes the siege. And again, out of turrets are down. Makes sense to try and get aggressive onto mid lane. Great poke there from Sayer, but the ulti unfortunately short there from Varus. They are going to get the curtain call down and try and get the poke in just to get them off the turret. If they can move his ear off here. Oh, oh. very nice. Creed almost takes him out. And I think they're going to get mid turret for this. Uh, they, but they have to... I don't think they can get this tower for now. Going to try. Culling down there for Zacro, so going to keep it up. Again, knowing that his ears off means that no real wave clear, but they're going to have to go in for a second wave here. See if they can get this mid turret and continue their stellar objective play early on. Yeah, and we can already see the Malkai around about 25 CS ahead of this Nautilus. Yeah, actually a nice little lead built in top because he's got all this free time now. They're going to pretty much hard commit to that turret though, but Sia once again, poor Jin out of bullets, does great damage to that turret, but as he now returns, they found a lot of cooldowns to try and kill him and couldn't get it. The fact that he was able to make it back does keep the tower up for now. We'll see if LG look for it again. But right now it is just three towers to two. Has they got a spare one? Oh, they got the tier two in bottom. There we go. The Solved scary it. thing about the Lion Gaming is they're not meant to be strong right now. They mean to be strong like in 15 minutes into the game, but they're the one who's uh, oppressing uh, Isuru Gaming. Yeah. Again, just great proactive play using their cooldown, smart teleport usage as well. Gragas always a threat under a tower, but Isuru's Gaming are going to consolidate everything, move themselves onto that Rift Herald and are able to take that out. Looks like Graves is going to pick up the buff. As they are still time here in the bottom side. Still going to push this down. Again, very long lane here in bottom. So probably doesn't want to shove it up too massively, but might as well collect the minions while it's there. And we are going to calm things down just a bit with the dragon back up in about a minute. We'll see if the teams are going to look back for ISG to get the first one. They actually committed four people for their Herald. So that's quite a beat up on the Herald. Poor Herald. Poor Herald. We'll see where the buff goes. See if they can make use of... Harold's demise as Asa actually sweeps in the mid lane, but Yuri's back to cover it. Massive damage there from the Varus. Got the uh, Caulfield's Warhammer and the cooldown boots built in already. So a lot of early CDR. And try and pressure down this Azir as Pride busy on top side. A little low on mana, but he's going to get a push down. Gerard's going to have to move in to answer that, but he's actually on Rod of Ages first on the Maokai. We used to see this a lot. I'm glad we're seeing it again. Ah, uh, Personally, I'm not a big fan <laughs> of Rod of Ages, uh, Maokai. He's like, oh, actually, no, uh, actually, it's fine because I, I just noticed they have a Gregor, so they it kind of compensate not having a carry jungler, mm -hmm. so it does provide a bit more damage. Well, not sure we'll be going any more AP than this. Maybe have a few more questions if that does happen, <laughs> but looks like another siege here for Lion. Going to be using that poke comp as best they can, but everyone here for ISG almost just pride now, even walking down. Everyone's going to commit as much as they can, but you can see it's just LG trying to push it down and ISG doing everything they can to wave clear ASAP. So this is actually denying uh, Isuru Gaming from using the Herald buff. So really good play for online gaming. Once again, trying to see if they can get damage down because the poke is massive. Yuri's blue unfortunately is worn off. So he's just going to have to rely on his personal mana pool and maybe some crafting potion charges, but look at the poke. Just needs a few more bullets in. Fry's going to have to answer in topside. Good wave clear here between Graves, Azir, and even have the culling in the back pocket if they need it. Dragon is back alive, but it does feel like this tower is possibly the thing they really want to hunt for. Yeah, LG Gaming's, uh, uh, Lion Gaming's playing this really well because they know what their objective is. Take the tower down. Not the dragon, the tower. Use the strength of their comp, certainly, is Kletos. Good damage there onto the Brom. They're going to try and clear this pink, but uh, going to cost them a lot of health there, Graves. Well, it looks like Warrior Enchant already built up. Doing a pretty substantial amount of damage early on, but looks like Lion might have to give up that siege for now. Blue is back up, so I think they want to try and steal her, but kind of separated here. Varus and Jin. Here comes Kojin Cole. Going to have to ulti up, looking for Azir, but does get pillared. Oh. Now Sayer in trouble. As the ulti from Varus is going to try and disengage him. Teleport committed. They may have caught Newbie off to the side there. Oh, the body slam, though. It's moved them out of the W. And Sayer's going to have to try and chase down the kill, but Trundle's out scot-free. There was a very nice reactive TP from uh, Jiro. He knew that uh, Seiya was in trouble and instant, uh, no hesitation TP. Well, I like the uh, coordination there, but not going to get the tower, unfortunately, just to sort of patch up 
some of the wounds and reset the map perhaps. This could give a window for the Dragon over to ISG and they are going to move into it. They've already got the first one. Would not mind a second here. Arce is going to tag it. So he knows it's there, but I think they will have to concede this. So Lion Gaming actually made a mistake. They they, they spent uh, two people uh, at the blue buff and just gave a free Dragon to Isaru Gaming. And Isaru Gaming, they're going to feel so confident because they have they now have the win condition of five Dragons. Yep, so they can start get that snowball rolling. Two is pretty good though, see if they can use it to maybe knock down a few turrets and equalize that particular score. As it stands, Lion Gaming still up about 2,000 gold from some good map play and those two kills I managed to pick up as well. They're just pressing out. Uri with the blue buff though, did pick up his own by the looks of things. Should be able to wave clear pretty confidently here and I think that's going to stop the siege pretty swiftly there. Mr. R still hanging out top. No TP this time around though. Pride does have his still. We'll see if that makes a difference as everyone's just going to collect their farms. They are actually playing very far back, not wanting to get caught in this long lane. So it was Blind Gaming lost their turn to Siege because they have to deal with the side wave. That's why uh, they lost uh, the Dragon, then uh, they lost a bit of uh, pressure at mid. Uh, very good play by Isuru Gaming. More, trying to keep the game a little bit more afloat as they are going to get stronger as the game goes on. You can see the Nash's Tooth actually already finished for EMP, so that's a pretty nice little item for him. So Zekor is probably close to Essence Reaver, because Seiya's actually gone back and finished his. And CS is very even between the two, although there isn't an extra assist there for the Jin. Other than that, though, just some early Spectres Cals over on the Lion Gaming side, going to try and shake off some of that magic damage. So, pretty standard itemization so far. And once again, the Siege is on. Psycho continuing to eat poke here from the Varus. So, Seiya's going to feel pretty nervous about the Siege, though, because he doesn't have flesh, but they do manage to get this out. Yep, not enough people there for serious gaming, so are able, to, are able to open up that central point of the map. And four turrets to two, actually. Pretty big lead. They actually go up about to 3,000 gold as well. So starting to get the game going. And Rift Herald even for another nice transition. Again, great objective focus play here. Yep, very nicely played by Lion Gaming. They know what their objective is. Uh, they'll probably go uh, transition this Herald buff into the top tower. Well, that's where they're all heading. Looks like they're going to keep Uri mid lane just to try and protect any push that was going to come in. They've walked past the ward though. Now Kletos is going to move himself up towards the top side. And Pride is there ready with the teleport. If he needs to come in, although he's currently bottom lane, Kletos going to spot a pink ward though. Lion Gaming, do you need to sort of get, get on top of this? Yeah, this could be trouble. Teleport in. And it's 4v5 right now. This Pride does make it in. Who's the target? They're going to go with Arce because it's probably the first one they can get to. Now in the back line, looking for the Jin. Could be trouble there for Saya. Pride already low, but Saya just gets absolutely wrecked there as Pride takes him out. Now Jarrell on the front line is going to get shredded down, but Kleto's going to take him out. Varus finally makes his way up for a disengage ulti, but a nice three-man Varus ulti almost takes the EMP and protects the rest of his team. So problem with the Lion Gaming uh, team comp is they're still a double threat comp. And since uh, Seiya just died, uh, there's just not enough damage coming out from the Lion Gaming. And Varus was just in the middle, just uh, in an island by himself. Yep. Couldn't quite spot the... Everyone moving top lane. Yuri sticking mid does cost his team a few kills. And Serious Gaming will get themselves a little bit more gold back into their pockets. You can see just the early damage from Azir and Graves. It's only going to get more problematic as the game continues on. But looks like Theax going to go back, get himself a new item, and Seiya returning from the respawn. Got the uh, Swiftness Boots now and Double Dagger. So should be transitioning into his next item. I imagine it's going to be a Zeal. But which Zeal item, I guess we'll leave up to him. Yeah, uh, probably uh, Phantom Dancer or Static Ship. We don't really see uh, Rapid Fire Cannon these days. So sad. Well, some vision put down there for Newbie. Nice pillar, actually. As Yuck spotted a ward with the Raptor Sense. <laughs> yeah, actually, pillar in the way. I like it. That's very creative. Man, I mean, they finished for Eerie there as well. And the Rodivate is stacking up for Maokai. So, still a lead here for Lion Gaming. As we almost approach the 20 minute mark of the game, we'll see what these teams are looking to do next. Because again, very open map right now. Line Gaming have created a lot of space with their four towers that they've taken out, but it does mean that if they get caught in some sort of long lane, kind of saw that in the last exchange. So things can go wrong very quickly with all the lockdown that the series have. So Line Gaming has to recognize that they have the TP advantage. Uh, so Maokai needs to uh, look for an opportunity to TP in and cut this Azir off or the Lucian off, then they can start sieging again. Looks like Jirel is going to go back top lane, Let's see if he can tie up Pride for long enough for him to start a siege. Curious as to where they'd go though. 
because you don't really want to siege into an Azir unless you can poke him down. Blue buff, not quite up yet though. So we're all just going to hang out, and Baron is up soon. I don't think we'll go straight for it, but teams do want to make sure they start getting some vision over, and there is actually the blue as well. So Uri's going to take that. That could be what prompts the siege here, although Varus maybe wants a few more items first. Right now though, Visser is just happy to keep pressuring this mid and making sure they keep tabs on Lion. Yeah, the longer this game goes, this hero game is going to get a lot stronger. So, Lion Gaming, they're, they're Ooh, pick potentially. Nope, noob is okay. It's Trundle. You can see He's the Yeah, <laughs> certainly is. You can see the potential though for the pick slash poke between the Varus and Jin. A very potent combination. Just have to be careful though. Looks like Dragon up in 30 seconds actually. That's where Lion are thinking next. They've recognized that ISG have two. Don't really want to give them a third and have them continue stacking that advantage up. So it could be looking to contest for the next one. Trying to get some early vision down. See if they can't find a catch in the jungle. Ooh, not bad, but Pride, the first member forward. Pretty hard to kill. Yep, so as you can see, Maokai is just waiting in the base for Homeguard TP. Where's a ward? He can TP. There's not many ward he can TP through. Yeah, to have that deep flank vision down. Sirius have done a good job kicking them out of this side of the jungle. So they're pretty much just going to have to go straight for it now. Maokai is committing to waiting though. See the poke, they found that ward. But damage going to come out for EMP. And again, the Trundle Pillar just keeps him off another ward. Even Blue's up here for a Sirius. I think they're happy with the way this particular standard for the objective is going. Dragon is back alive. But Maokai is still waiting in base. Yeah, and... There's a huge wave uh, hitting top, so I'm not sure what uh, Pride is doing. He should just grab that wave since he has to teleport himself and try and catch up to this Maokai. Perhaps worried that if he does leave, then something like bad this. would happen. Well, they're starting a dragon. Are they going to trade for mid -down? Okay, they're trading for mid -down. Well, they are going to get the dragon down. Seriously, need to be careful not to be caught. Are they actually going to eat a hook there from Pride? They are going to collapse in for a team fight here. Ulti out onto Theok, but Arce does flash away. Calling down. Arce has to block it off, but Theok gonna body block a few last shots and will stay safe. But looks like mid tower is gonna go down. Yeah, and the Maokai is still holding on to his TP. He actually, I, I believe he spent like roughly two minutes in his base doing nothing. Well, unfortunately, couldn't TP in, and that tower is gonna get shredded. We'll tank up the last few turret shots, make sure they take it out. And four to three now, the turret score. With just that tier 2 in bottom side being the real structure lead, Serious Gaming have done a good job keeping themselves in it. Now they're only they're within 1,500 gold. At one point, I think it was a 3k lead for Lyon, so you can see as the mid to late power of their composition starts to come up, just how much more comfortable they feel in 5v5 teamfights. So it was a trade for Dragon for a tower, but both team... Uh they're going to feel pretty happy, but I think the Suru Gaming is going to be the one that's going to be benefit better because they got the mid tower, which is huge against the poke comp. Certainly always nice to beat the wave clear mid laners. Make sure you take out their tower, but still just the outer ring felt on either side. It's like Lion are trying to find a way in to see some of these longer lanes, but again, can be dangerous, especially when Pride is ready on the Nautilus with the teleport. In fact, he's working bottom side right now. He's got the Sunfire Cape all finished up. Got a couple of extra tanky components in there as well. It's decent pressure down towards that tier two and bottom. Jarrell's gonna have to pull off and try and answer that. Oh, that's, that's a lot of damage. Good poke there. Zyko, they're gonna face tank this up. Oh, he's oh, eating more. He might Crit be dead. Needs the last bullet, oh. does land it. Very nice snipe. That was very nice. Uh, so much poke. It was like half a screen, a uh, full screen away. Yep. And he died. And now the pressure's on actually. Still poke out onto EMP. Very nice pick there from Lion. Could convert into a tier two tower. EMP's forced to back actually. So this is the setup. The Ox even here ready with the ultimate. Yep, the Maokai's heading back, uh, grabbing that top farm and get ready to TP whenever he wants. Oh, look at Pride though. Very aggressively posturing forward, trying to clear it out. Nautilus is so tanky at this stage because he's finished the Spirit Visage as well. And it's decent damage to the tier two, but they actually can't finish it off. Yeah, and you have to remember it's past 20 minutes, so there's going to be home guard uh, coming in and out. Well, don't want to get caught, certainly. That was the last successful team fight for ISG. It was a good teleport in for Pride, forcing effectively a 5v4 with Uri in mid lane. Power stays up, though. Seiko actually going for that rapid fire cannon. Like you say, we don't see too much of it, but Seiya's actually going for it as well. Oh, actually, I, I really like this adaptation because 
like I said, we usually don't see rapid fire cannon, but it's against the Pokom, and they're the Pokom, so they want more range, and having more range uh, is really good against Pokom, and as a Pokom, you want more range as well. Yep. Kind of funny how that works, but it makes a lot of sense. This uh, is actually going to take out his red buff and move into that mid lane, try and defend it. Ghost Blade finish for Varus here as well. So, relatively strong at this point of the game. Frozen Heart also finishes nice, so we'll see if Lion maybe fancy another Siege. But have to be careful of Baron always. 25 minutes in, so the teams really start thinking about it. Santarit goes down in mid lane, so he's able to take care of that. Yeah. I really like this uh, Frozen Heart buy from uh, Lion, uh, from the Maokai. You usually see uh, Iceborne Gauntlet these days, but they have three uh, attack speed reliant uh, carries, so really good buy. Very efficient. There's maybe a catch here on Pride. Gonna take a while to kill him. But the stun's nice good. Stun. Great snare there. Thiark gonna follow him with a body slam. There's another follow up stun, and that's gonna force the flash out of Pride. That's probably all they'll want. Again, it was gonna take a while to chew through that health buff, yeah, but like again, the siege is starting. Like you said, all day one. Well, probably on the tower as well. See if they can get that out of it. But the poke begins again. Pride face tanking at every possible turn. It's actually soaking a lot of damage there in the front lines. So this time, you race uh, top with them, so, and he has his blue buff, so endless poke. Well, we'll just have to be careful not to get flanked. Although well, Pride, I guess I can see him. That's so probably not too threatening. Just trying to look the poke under the carry, so newbie off to the side. Maybe can disrupt them with a the pillar. Oh, good hook. Yuri actually maybe caught. The ulti's down there for Nord as well. Is he going to follow him with the damage? And now here comes a flank. Kratos flashes into the back line, but he gets exhausted. Is now Nubi in the front line. He's going to get himself stunned up as well. Arce going to pop the ulti. Curtain and now Seiya is going to look for that curtain call. Kratos, though, round the side is going to try and lock them down. But it's just that one kill. Maokai does fall. Oh. Everyone low, though, as Lucian gets a double. Varus will finally fall down. And Zekro going off. We're going to take down another, but he eats the Winter's Bite. Such a, a good play from both teams, but at the end of the day, like, like it's through gaming the one that comes out ahead. Again, feels like they got collapsed on. That's never what you want with the poke comp. So yeah, lucky to get out though. Kalados couldn't quite find the re-re-engage. Although it was a very brave flank from Graves. Looks like health bar's not high enough to maybe do the Baron, so no objective gonna be transitioned into. Instead, just some good wave clear here in that mid lane and we'll reset. Lots of cooldowns though, burnt there in the top lane. And once again, a siege was started when no tower was picked up by Lion. So at this point, the Maokai is probably thinking, hmm, was the Rod of Ages really worth it? What <laughs> if he had the Spirit Visage and the Cinder Hulk instead? Cinder Hulk would be impressive. Yeah. Given that he's a top laner. But I like it. If he had those two items, maybe, just maybe he could yeah, have lived. Just a bit tankier. Instead, he's a little bit squishier. We'll end up going down. So Isuru Gaming, uh, both Azir and uh, Graves finished their uh, two item uh, right now, so they're in a massive uh, power drop. Looking good. Moving into that dragon, perhaps. Looks like ISG, of course, wants it. The LG are more than happy to pick some sort of fight for it. Line Gaming shouldn't be the one hitting the dragon first. They should be the one poking. That's what they're doing so far. Going to try and get some vision down. A decent. Uh, access to the choke points. You can see that. I kind of know what's going on. The Maka should grab the top one. Yes, he thinks. Yep. Scott Crab though goes over to Asuras. And looks like LG might just give it up. Not really worth picking a fight that you'll lose over, but they are going to stay for a little while longer. Midway is pushing. They do have some pressure. So they might call to just run mid. Uh, that's what Say is doing yep. right now. Say is going on a solo mission. I said it's going to tag the, uh, tag the dragon. And look, they can, they can finally spot the Jin. Look, she's going to get under the dragon. Flanked by the AD carries though. Good Varasol. He's going to find Kletos. Very but nice. the does get hooked up there. I say in the front line going to block some shots off though as the Culling goes in. But Braum with a great unbreakable stops a lot of that pressure. The Ark doesn't have his ulti, but they get out safely and see it did get that tower. A uh, very nice uh, disengage from uh, Lion Gaming. They c they could have been a very devastating pillar. Oh, starting the Baron because they're hoping Ice oh, would start I the dragon. I don't like this. They need to back out. Yeah, I think as soon as they see them, they'll have to get off the Baron, but they may have taken a little too much damage from it. They're already off the objective, so smart play there. And it looks like we'll just consolidate and clear some vision out. I like the. Uh, it was a test, I feel like. But uh, Serious Gaming passed pretty easily there. Yeah, I, I really like... Uh, the pillar's just doing immense amount of work in this game. 
just vision uh, check, uh, almost denying that uh, wood, that uh, banana bush down there, and just slowing this down this 80 carries. Right now, and that's all going to convert into a dragon here. His third dragon, Crucerous Gaming, does go over. Again, pretty much trading a tower for it once more. Five towers to three right now for LG. But it feels like they still want to keep the siege up and that gold lead growing. Because right now, I think ISG are a little too close than they may like. So they're just going to clear this out and start it again. Oh, they actually saw them hitting the Baron. It's a bait. It's a bait. Fight actually TP's in. Ooh, I like that's growing up. <laughs> I think the bait has now been quashed. Oh, so they're going to go back. So they know they have the TP advantage now, so they should actually do uh, send the Maokai bot and oh, actually... Mm, but they already got the second tier tower bot, so that's going to feel pretty iffy. Yeah, they've got great side pressure actually. You can see just how big the waves on top and bottom are. Yeah, but they're just giving it a full free. Well, looks like Luchin going to swoop in and get all that CS. CR, I guess, is just going to CS them as well. And Pride, very tanky with almost a frozen heart of his own built in. Close the Glacial Shroud and the Warden's Mail already completed. Barris doesn't quite have enough armor penetration without a last whisper. But... Yep, so Isuru Gaming, just gonna, uh, even if, if it, even though they're like 1k behind, that 1k gold can go, I uh, turn around really fast for Isuru Gaming. Once they get uh, some kills, uh, they can transition into more towers and more snowballing, and that's, that's the win condition for Isuru Gaming. I feel like LG are still trying to find a siege, but they have run out of time to make full effective use of their composition. I guess we'll have to find out. They can still team fight, of course. It's just tricky against the likes of Azir and Nautilus. And even Trundle and Graves, let's be honest. Yeah, and they're essentially a double ADC comp, so just need to watch out. Yep, damage is always there. Stiak, pretty tanky. Does have himself a Spirit Visage and a Warden's Mail. So, and a Cinderhog, actually. I didn't even notice that. He actually didn't go Runic Echoes. Oh, yeah. I was actually going to touch on that, but I actually forgot about it. But yeah, interesting uh, build from Theak. I mean, it's pretty tanky. I don't mind it. Let's see if you can uh, soak up just enough damage, though. As once again, a siege will start. So you're checking that brush. Doesn't find anyone. Traps down. This tower is kind of the last obvious one they can take out. So I see he's actually going to chunk this out. I I think they might have enough here. Because he is actually pretty far away. But Arce grabbed up. He's going to take some damage. Pride locked up though. But you can see the poke just not touching the Nautilus right now. No, he's just too tanky. Too tanky. Let's back out. And here comes the re-engage perhaps. Have to be real careful. Looks like Lion though are going to get themselves out of the way. And ISG will just reset the map again. But it feels like every time Lion Gaming try and start a siege, Asurus are just able to stop it. And that's a worry for the poke comp. Yeah, even though this Maokai is 60 CS behind, he's just doing an immense amount of work. Which are all able to take out the Grom, so we're going to continue getting the CS lead, but that, uh, that Nautilus, sorry. Just fine. There's the MP. Looks like he's going to get his blue buff as well. Just a bit of map to take here. We'll reset some side waves. Have a check in quickly with the items. Looks like Infinity Edge actually done for Zyker is a nice item. We had the Rylos also up for EMP, so. Definitely three items starting to come on board now for a serious gaming. That's actually a huge power spike from the Lucian. That's 70% crit chance, and he's just going to do so much damage. Oh, Jin, a little far away from his third item, but a last whisper for Varus there. Could maybe start to take out some of the health of Nautilus. I'm not convinced just yet, mm. but certainly has to start doing some damage because that tank is a problem. Yeah, there's just been a hidden uh, CS differential uh, happening at the mid. I'm mm. not sure how that happened. I don't know either, but yeah. I'm sure MP's happy to have it. He's what, 60, 70 CS ahead already? Yeah, 70, wow. Huge lead there in mid lane. Kind of explains why this here's items coming up surprisingly quickly here. Although we're getting a little deeper into the game. 34 minutes almost. The oh. longer this goes, Isuru Gaming's going to feel better. Well, I'm more than happy to be patient. Dragon up in a minute 35, so starting to get that as another win condition as well. They sort of started it with the first two. Did manage to give one over to Lion Gaming. But having a fourth always feels good. Able to threaten consistently for that fifth. We already know that they want a team fight based on the comp they've got. Yeah. <laughs> team fighting with this comp, late game with five dragons sounds uh tricky. Terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
Oh, Ooh, great poke again. EMP. Not, didn't surf far enough out. Oh, last bullet. He's Ooh. gonna find him. On point today. With these so much damage. She might be enough poke to maybe start something here. Thiak looking for maybe a pick with the Gragas. Pied was bottom, but he does have TP. But LG are looking for something. Looks like they'll move over to the right-hand side of the map and clear vision out for this dragon. They know they have to stop this snowball potentially. Yeah, but like I said, they shouldn't be the one who should start the dragon. Mm. And both the top laners teleports are back up, so nothing used once again. And Baron also a threat. This is the real worry when you get late. That you have to balance two pretty important objectives as it gets later and later. Lion Gaming, they're going to push a wave down. Dragon up in 20 seconds, so not quite time yet. I think they're hoping that someone takes a shortcut through the jungle. Okay, I'll, I'll rephrase that. Someone that isn't Pride <laughs> takes a shortcut through the jungle. Although, maybe if it's all 5. If it's 5v1, I think Nautilus will die. Mm, you, don't, you probably don't <laughs> want the Zia to face check. No. <laughs> Looks like Dragon in 5, though. LG have done a good job setting up vision around the area. Is and Ice, you're actually going to give it up. It's been a full um, Asura gaming. The Baron. All right, so LG can see that, though. But they might be a little too late. Brave. They have a lot of Baron damage as well. I'm they not sure it. they're going to make it. Newbie's they actually going to zone them off with a pillar. Does see all of them, and there's Baron over. Good call there from Asura's gaming. Very confident Baron. Huge turnaround. Uh, now... Our, our Lion Gaming's other one in the back foot. Yep, and again, they tried to set up for this dragon, hoping to poke them down. The counter was okay. We'll just walk, we'll just walk away from the dragon. This is you can safe. have it, they'll take their second. Yep, Baron for dragon, any day. Certainly dragon two for Baron. Seems like a good trade there. But LG at least do take the dragon away for themselves. We'll see how much damage Sirius can get done with the Baron buff, though. As I see, it goes back, gets his Void Staff. Oh, well, last swift spot for Zykro as well. These are big carries. Yeah, oh, this game just got in so much hard for Lion Gaming. They played the early game really well, but they didn't really transition into anything. Yeah, and it feels like now that we're pretty much in late game at this point, or heading towards it, that uh, problems are going to start to occur. Pokemon's falling off just a bit. EMP and Pride, that's the first tower. You can see how quickly that one falls. That's just an auto attacking Azir and a Nautilus with Baron buff. Yep. And despite them being down in tower, they're the one in ahead of gold. Yeah, that's true, actually. They finally flipped the gold lead back up. Almost 3k. Baron plus those towers helping out. And Zykro is just so massive. Him and Kletos will tear through turrets if they're given any free time. Although it looks like Pride has to answer a huge wave in bottom lane. Delicious. That is that. Yeah, that's a nice amount of CS for Nautilus. Is a bit far behind. And he's going for a Thorn Mail next item. Ooh. That's going to be so much armor from this Nautilus. If you thought the double AD carries were having trouble before Soul Strikes, <laughs> let me tell you, it's not getting any, not getting much more fun, unfortunately. Yeah, and the problem is the both AD carries bought Quick Quicksilver Sash, so mm, Quicksilver Sash doesn't do any damage. No, it doesn't. That's certainly true. I mean, you do more damage when you're alive, I've been told, but <laughs> maybe it's not enough. I've, I've been told you do same amount of damage when you're 100% HP and 50% HP. Yes, that's true too. Mm. Also 10% HP, I believe. Yeah. If you're all up, you can do more damage. Mm. <laughs> it looks like just a siege starting here. Sun turret plus some Baron creeps. But with Pride down the bottom side with Baron, this tier 2 should actually fall down. And Asurus Gaming are finally going to even up these turrets that have taken a while to get to. But the siege comes getting siege. That seems like a problem. <laughs> They just need to wait until this Nautilus and chip the bottom tower. Plenty of patience here. Yeah, Pride's going to smack that down. Take Nautilus with a bit of help from Baron. A couple, and Dragon too as well. Not too bad. Waves building on top. You can see kind of how all the pieces fit together. A really good setup here. They will pressure all three waves. Sun Tower falls though. And Osiris actually, they'll just take the tier two. Baron's running out. And I think they'll just say, you know what? We did good damage. We'll, we'll go back now. Not going to get greedy. Yep, so Asuru Gaming is going to be very happy with the result they got from that Baron buff. It's just what this Lion Gaming is going to do. Like, there's just so much problem. Yep, but 4,500 gold up now, actually. So Asuru has completely turned this game around with that very confident Baron call. And again, their carries are just getting bigger. Death Cap is uh, getting close to done there for EMP. Sakura is actually building, looks like Blade of the Ruin King there on Lucian. Is his final item. Does have the last wisp, but, but hasn't upgraded it just yet. Obviously, you do see Lord Dominic's regards over on Yuri's side there for the Varus. So, 
Carries just a little bit behind on items here. Asura's just a little bit more strength at this point. Even Kletos is a threat as well. Interesting Cutlass buy. Like, I know, I understand he needs the lifesteal. Uh, just from the, po against the Pokemon. Like, really good buy. But, Blade of Run King? Hmm. Like, the Reddit just told me he just <laughs> needs a buff. So, hmm. Well, could be a Hextech Gunblade. <laughs> could be. Well, looks like looks for a pick action on the Kletos, but he does flash out of the Varus ulti. I like the attempt, but Serious Gaming dodge it. And every time those cooldowns miss a potential pick, I feel like Lion just have to go back to turtling up. And you can see a counter push here immediately from ISG. This mid tier 2 might actually die. In fact, they're going to face tank it. Pride's just happy Ooh. to soak some damage here. Ooh, catch maybe. Sheral is pretty tanky on the front line there. They're actually going to lock up Pride. Say it's sort of zoned out though, so we can't really add in a little bit more. But a nice snare is going to move it back in. Pride though, literally standing there and taking it. There's the curtain call. He's going to get some more poke down. They do stun him up. Might have enough damage to take him out. They oh, will get set. it as Saya crits him. And now they can chase him for a 5v4. EMP, though, he's ready with the ulti. Lion still to be so careful. Yeah, and that was a really nice uh, pickoff from the Lion Gaming. And they managed to kill the giant. Well, 45 seconds. The Titan is down. Let's see if they can get some damage done here to these turrets. There's, there's just immense... Uh, way bit top, so Maokai has to back. Yep. But he does have TP. Well, can maybe TP to a minion. I do want to break here if possible, but again, Trundle Pillar, Graves AoE, Azir AoE. This feels like a tough ask to try and break this tower. And I think Lion realized that. They'll back off. Just consolidate back and try and steal some jungle. Maybe set some wards back up for this dragon, because again, I don't really want to give another one over where possible. So the level difference between the carries are starting to show up. Uh, Zia's level 17, uh, Varus was 15, now 16. Uh, Jin is 16 and uh, Lucian's level 17. Same with the Graves, he's 16 and uh, Gregus is level 15. Yeah. So much level difference. Yeah, just some pretty much extra stats really. You get from leveling up, or being higher level I should say. Mm. And it's just, sh uh, I think a testament to how efficient ISG have been towards this mid to late game, kind of delaying the game, making sure they get their farm. We even see the farm differences still, mostly for mid and bottom lane. Top lane still looking great for the Maokai, but Pride is more than effective as a four tank item Nautilus at this point. So I believe uh, Jero's going back and trying to home guard from that pink ward on the far right. Ooh, actually maybe oh no. found something there. Kletos actually caught out. Yuri's gonna take him down and now Jero's gonna home guard in, but oh, Trundle Pillar. Gonna stop that immediately, but another 5v4 start, a great pick onto the Graves, and their dragon, that dragon, sorry, is gonna go over to them as well. Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake from Klathos. Uh, not sure what he was doing out there without a flash, so, and uh, Lion Gaming managed to get a pick off. And this is sort of the thing that we, I think, are starting to see as far as the other win condition goes. Yes, they've got a poke and siege comp, but the other way to, you know, make this comp look good and sort of extend its life into the late game is, you know, use all your pick ultimates. You still have that ability as well. You know, it's pretty hard to win a 5v5 against this team, but a 5v4, that's probably doable. Yeah, well, 1v5. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely doable. <laughs> <laughs> and looks like Baron's going to get started as well. They've got pretty good Baron damage. Yeah, they're going to feel pretty nervous about this. Yeah, have to be careful. They'd like a catch if they can get it. They're actually... Gregus has flash. Still tanking the Baron for a little longer. I think they're trying to bait. Oh, Sacred, that's too far forward. Twisted advance in there. The can look down as well. That's the flash out of Lucian. EMP pushing them back in. Pride trying to lock them down, but Yuri flashes the wall and takes out EMP on the other side. Now the Yuck still tanking up as Pride's trying to get them down, but a double kill in there for the Varus. He's going to move it as Saya locks up Pride there as well. Lion Gaming going to clear up another kill as Varus gets a triple. Very nice play from Yuri. He actually, fla I believe he flashed over the blue buff wall mm -hmm. and managed to kill the um, uh, Azir and. Very nice play. Well, Kletos in the area actually oh, could spell trouble. This Baron is dangerous. Graves does a lot of damage. Arce puts up the door. And he's one level higher. Good exhaust. Oh, Snare not there, though. Oh. Takes out Arce, but I think the Baron's going to go over to Lion. It's really close. But Kletos can't get in for a flash. Stay out. Oh. oh, actually takes him out. I thought he flashed the wall, but instead it's one bullet and he goes down. Four kills in a Baron with only trade for one. Arce does fall. So now the turnover from the Lion Gaming. Very nice pick off. Uh, I was very surprised they managed to come back from this. And yeah, let's see how they use this Baron buff. Well, definitely want to try and get some damage done. You have to think in a siege with Baron. 
Her team comp looks very well set up to do so. And look at how much damage Sayer is doing on this Jin. Five items with just his last Whisper to be upgraded. Infinity Edge already done. We sort of mentioned it before. It felt like there was a big item discrepancy between the carries, but the, uh, both Yuri and Sayer step up, and Jin is doing immense amount of damage at this point. So, as I said, you know, QSS does no damage, but Skimitar does damage. Yep. <laughs> so now that he has the gold, he's got the best of both worlds. As, uh, looks like they're going to try and clear this out, but Baroness is a little too strong. This tower is dead by the looks of things. Look, the Ark is tanking. He'll happily do it, though. Newbie looking for something here, but Pry gets the ulti down onto Sayo. Good ulti in for Varus, though, but the Gragas cast is going to separate them all. Jarrah's actually going to go down. I feel like they maybe had a window in the choke point there, but Pride's looking to keep chasing. He's got the flash. Gets slowed and snared, though. And the disengage still there for LG. He will get out. They break mid. Feeling overzealous, uh, Blind Gaming. Arce wasn't even there. Well, a little awkward, but we'll see what damage gets done on the other side because Jarrah's dead for 40 seconds still. This tower looking not long for this world and does fall down. Six turrets apiece, actually, at this stage of the game. But Kurt Kurt calls up. Bit of poke. I believe it got interrupted yep. by the Thunder Pillar. Oh, maybe. Thought he maybe cancelled it himself, but I think you're right about the interrupt. Pride, though, getting tagged. Does have to burn the flash. Great ulti once again from Yuri. They may have caught Newbie here off to the other side, but it's not enough damage to follow in. He does flash out of the way, but these long range initiations, man, they are brutal. They're very brutal indeed. And Zero Gaming managed to hold off from this Baron buff, even despite losing uh, mid inhibitor. Yeah. Well, right now, they've done it, but we'll see if they can keep holding because the big wave bottom side creates some pressure and draws back ready with Teleport almost back alive. LG do want to try and take this inhibitor. And the Sirius just a little slow off the recall there. They're actually going to lose it. Double AD carries more than enough for it. Arce's here this time. Ooh, hook. Oh, Hook. They're support. going to catch the Braum, but they don't think they can fight here. Arce does flash out of the way. The Arc's here as well. Disengages there. Varasol's going to lock them down. Zekro actually eats the poke on the other side. He's dead. But he almost gets taken out. Arce instead does go down to Kalatos. Unfortunate to not be able to pick up Lucian there for a trade. But they get the inhibitor. So opening up a little bit more space. But this game is... Back and forth. Very back and forth. Yeah. I'm surprised there's no banner of command from the other team. It's very difficult for Maokai or Nautilus to deal with any of those. I like... Uh, Maokai, I mean Nautilus, for the Zizirot portal. Mm -hmm. Very good buy, but still no banner, so... Hmm. Gonna have to see. Kinda have to do the Cedars manual style. As the portal does go down there for Pride. Triple cannon wave here. There's another, f as a fourth one comes in, but... Need to watch out. Wave clears there. The arc actually, yeah, not as tanky as he thinks. Critical. Once again, looking for EMP. Just gonna find Newbie though. Sorry, find Pride. Funny how they're both pretty tanky. <laughs> <laughs> they're all tanky. Oh yeah, that's true. Especially this late. Gold still up for ISG, but doesn't matter too much given that pretty much everyone's inventories are full. And looks at like that siege will be stopped there. Jarrah will stay to clear that wave out. Actually has a QSS of his own. We need to stop our Trundle ulti, I believe. Yeah. Um, if despite it does no damage, but he doesn't need damage. Yep. He's just, he just needs to be a tank. Oh. Dragon up in 25 seconds as well. So, definitely potential here. In fact, both teams are at three apiece right now. Had six total dragons in this game. It's been quite a long opener. 48 minutes. Very back and forth League of Legends. I feel like Lion maybe have found their way back in, but this is really just one team fight away. Potentially just ending on the spot. Yeah, this could go for an hour. Ooh. Yeah, by the looks of it. Maybe it's now. Zekra going to move in. Calling there onto Arce, but hook lands as well. Pry wants the initiation. Locks one up Zycro, on the front Zycro, side, Zycro. but a great ulti. Zykro eats the ulti there from both Varus and Gragas, but he'll live to tell the tale somehow. And Arce once again, the only He's casualty. Coat and call. Oh, they're going to try and block all the shots. A little bit of poke damage, but not too much to the tanky members of ISG. Zycro I can't believe Zykro lives. Yeah, I can't believe he lived. Well, it's lucky you did, because the 5v4 feels a lot more attractive than the 4v4 that maybe would have started. Yeah, I, I, I still believe he should just sell the Blade of Ruin King and go for the Skimitar. Like, he needs that Q, uh, QSS and get out of jail free card. Well, almost got put in prison there. Does manage to stay alive. Life still back up, pushing out the bottom wave, and that is Dragon number 4 actually going to Asurus Gaming. We could go 
to another Baron and potentially a fifth Dragon here to try and end this one. Because every time a fight starts, I have to say both teams are doing a great job of trying to lose the minimum every time a fight starts. Yeah. The fact that Arce has been the only one that's died in the last like three or four engagements is actually quite impressive. Yeah, and the only one who hasn't died was is Theak. Very nice of him. It's true, actually. Secret Agent Greg is at 007 right now. Oh, like and uh, Newbie yep. hasn't died as well. He's My bad. He's one agent better. Double <laughs> it. Again. The next generation. Very, yeah. Very tanky between those two. Sterex Cage actually finished for Yuri, so he's a little bit concerned about the potential damage. Mm. Baron up in a minute as well. So teams have to be awfully cautious at this stage. 50 minutes already. Death time is awfully long, but Arce does make it back to join his team. And again, LG look for a pick. Newbie spots them all, though. Getting that pillar down. Yeah. But is that Sterex really worth it? Who's there to burst him down, though? Hmm. I, I believe Bloodthirster would have been much better. Maybe. We'll have to see. If he lives... There's a huge wave at top, but... Zero Gaming Club going bot. Yeah, these minion waves are hilariously big at this point. <laughs> Given how strong the minions are getting. Push has started here. This is drop portal helping also. But once again, the wave clear's pretty good. Zykra actually hit some poke there on the front side. Very short range JD carry on the Lucian. It's not particularly safe. Yeah, but he managed to get so much chunk on this tower. Well, I believe, unfortunately for this one, you have to kill this one for it to really matter. Yeah, true. But I do like it. Good damage there from my SG, but they are going to have to enter that huge wave in top lane. In as fact, that tower goes down. Wow. As long as they come back and siege bot, uh, it will be worth it. But mm -hmm. like you said, if they don't, then there was just no, uh, there was just no point. Well, this is the juicy stack of minions. Lucian going to clear this all out. But he's full item. It's true. Should give to your support. <laughs> we're going to say a jungle for a second the there. Baron. All right, pretty aggressive Baron call. Uh, they're the poke comp. Yeah. Get back out. And the they, listen, they heed your advice. The Ark will disengage off the Baron. Again, another test. A serious gaming pass. They've been great around the Baron area, actually. All game long. Really just as one catch that could turn this around. It's very tense. His pride, I think, is looking for it. Does get snared up, though. Need some damage on the Gragas Q. And again, we sort of go back to a very extended push and pull. I believe there's two Captain's Boots from uh, Isuru Game. I really like that buy uh, from the Nautilus. Uh, if he gets a hook in, everyone else can follow up. Yep. Newbie's got some as well. Expecting to be in the front lines. Kind of have him on either end of the fight as well. Curtain call. Sire so looking for it. He gets one. I think it was EMP that he tagged. That's good damage. And actually might be enough to retake this mid in here. Looks like it is actually. No one's in position. So be careful though. Pride not going to look for the flank, although this looks a bit dangerous. He wants it. Oh, the hook's not there. Good separation from Lion to not get hooked. And the poke continues. Once again, mid and hip's going to create that pressure, but 53 minutes almost. And unfortunately, mid and hip doesn't open up a whole lot of space to do that big buff there that they, do, they are trying to take. Yeah, and third Baron. It's available. Mm. I mean, we're definitely going to at least a third Baron here. Lion also have to worry about the next dragon that's coming up in about three to four minutes. Lots of, lots of different things as the game gets late, especially this late. Yeah, at this late of the game, anything can happen. Like, one small mistake can just close out the game. Yep, pretty much ends it on the spot. These two teams have done a great job so far navigating the different passages of this game. Lion do, do well, actually, to hold on to what looked like a very scary mid-game there from ISG. Now dragging up in a minute 35. So the threat again is on the table. Be a very... Fun way to start international wild card. It's going to be a long day. If LG managed to take Dragon 4. Can you imagine? Our first <laughs> game goes down to double Dragon 5. Oof. We're not there yet, though. It's okay. It's going to get too excited. Maybe we're going to move his way back out. And again, two very important buffs to take care of on opposite sides of the map. We've got supers down the mid lane. We've got huge long side waves. That good pushes have been started. Looks like ISG actually have the side wave initiative right now. I actually don't like this Frozen Mallet buy from the Graves. I believe if he went for Infinity Edge, he would, he would definitely dash out Infinity more damage. Infinity Edge? Really? Yeah. Is that a thing? 
Just go full carry mode on the, gr the jungle graves. What yeah. have you been doing in your solo queue games? <laughs> I'm the carry now. <laughs> well, don't mind it. But we're adding a little bit more tankiness and utility. Ooh, I see needs to watch out. Yeah, this is dangerous. Pride again, he just doesn't care at all. Like, he'll die eventually, but... Oh, oh hang wait, what is this? Split off. Yeah, they've sort of actually... Upside down lanes. I'll say maybe caught again. It Big TP, TP there. Gonna try and lock somebody up. They need to get some damage down though. Newbie actually in onto Thiak. Ulti there looking to try and take out the Trundle, but the damage is still there for ISG. Yuri still moving out. is actually on the other That's side cool. trying to poke them down. Look at Zaka on the back end of it, but Kletos already took out the front line. Whoa. Huge damage though Yuri. from Saya. And maybe actually can Yuri's re engage go here. EMP moves his way back in. Yuri is gonna Zyko die. Zyko needs to watch out. Yeah, he does. He's trying to fight Saya, but Arce is gonna go down. That's three members dead actually. And Zyko getting oh. chased down. He is going to go down to Jin. Saya goes on a very heroic mission to get one kill back, but the Ark's now caught out. Ooh. Good flash out of the Azir ult. He's going to keep him safe. But it's 2v4 right now, Soul Strikes. And these death timers are long. Uh, oh, there's a huge wave at top, actually. Yep, in fact, they, they transition there. Don't bother with the mid lane. Mm. Mm, this is going to be very tricky. Mm. 40 seconds pretty much on average for these three death timers. Yeah, this is the best chance that uh, Azuri Gaming can close. Yep, it looks like they are just going to try and close for it. Not going to take any more inhibs. We're done playing safe, they said. We're going to try and end this game. Saya does a lot of damage. Ian has to be really careful, oh. but Saya eats a hook there with QSS it off, but the it's damage over. is there, and the game is going to end. Azuri's Gaming win a 56 minute slog fest to kick off the International Wildcard Invitational. What a game it was. What a game indeed. Uh, that last one hook, it's always that hook uh, champion that gets uh, the last uh, laugh at the end. And you said it, it really was going to come down to kind of one moment there. I feel like maybe a bit of mispositioning towards the end of that last fight. And Asterius Gaming just saw the 5v5. And so this is it, this is our moment to take the game. Yeah, and they just hold out so long. Uh, even despite being poked and getting behind in tower, they managed to bounce back and take the series. And again, the strength of that comp just cannot be underestimated. We've seen Azir do crazy things to come the late game and just the overall damage of that comp had the front line the comp was sort of built into win 5v5s in the late and that's exactly what it did yeah it's through gaming they were probably thinking all right guys we were behind early so let's just go late game well late we'll game. have to see what happens but we are going to check in with the results there you can see lion do win uh zero sorry do win the first game but i believe we are going to go to a break when we return we are going to have hard renovers intz we'll see you guys there for the next game